fact that we have done singles together and we've done album cuts together, I think that's kind of built the chemistry. That, you know, that in our personal relationship, that kind of built the chemistry and it made it to where um, when you when you have a single, you got a song where you have certain expectations. And then with, with the album cut, you have less expectations, but it, it also has to fit on the album. So you pretty much cover all the grounds of creativity in terms of what you expect out of the song. So with doing the whole project, you're already going into it knowing what to expect. You know, we've, I've been doing the entire press run with Prem, and he's been saying, yo, one of the things about working with Royce is I already know what I'm gonna get from him. And that's a very important component when you're making music very important component going into a, into a project. So um, I think that the fact that we've done so much work together over the years, whether it be a single or just the album cut, I think that kind of made it easier for us to, to, to do a complete body of work. Just, you know, because you know we know what to expect. Basically what it's meant for me, you know, with tracks I've done for Royce period, is always, as he said earlier, the connection that we get it's always just on. It's just on. Where with certain artists, you get, you, you got to kind of build on what, what you're gonna do with with him. I really gotta bring my A game with the beat because if he's into it, I, I already know once he laces it, I, it's gonna make me come up with the scratches and the hooks and, and lay down all my parts to finish it. Even if it's par partially done, I'll still be able to get the 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 meat of it already done because it's kind of it's not kind of it's really up to me to really give him a banger because uh, he said it earlier, Boom kind of ruined it for all the other songs we gotta do because we gotta keep topping that. And it's always like, damn, can we make another Boom? You know, can we make another one that's even on that level? So that's always thought out when we do stuff, but we still always make creative bangers. You know, I, one of the ones I like a lot that, uh, from the body of work we've done is second place, you know. Uh, I remember the day that I did it and sent it to him, and uh, it was just, um, it, it was just like, he did exactly what that beat needed, being that it's such a, 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 an ill pattern of how that beat goes, you know, and even the, the, the progression of the, of, of the buildup of the horns and everything, it's just, he, he did, he, it's almost like he turned into the pattern of the music. Yeah, and but but it, it, I, it, I didn't have to explain what he should how to approach it. He approached it exactly what, uh, as how I expected him to do it, just not that intently, you know. And I knew he was gonna get busy, but he he made it creative again. Even the part where he said, "You're about to see how part of Paul Rosenberg go," and then he said, uh, "He did something that's like a Demar Rosenberg vertical." Uh, God, the line went. It's it, you know, but it, it's it, it was one of the most creative ones in a while that we've done together, you know, since, since, since working on Street Out. So, it's, it's it, you know, he makes me make really, really left field joints. Boom was left field. That's not, that's not typical, it's left field. You know, just that clavinet thing it hit at the end, it, it just makes it tick it up, you know, and then he, you know, he told me they had the ticks, even even in the song, and why he laid the rhyme, so. We, we just click, man. I love Hit Em, I love Ding, I, 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 I love, we even got one that we were working on for his solo album called Wizard With Words that he forgot about, I think, until I played it for you, because you would cut it and just send me a rough. And it, and it, it's funny, because there's a part where you say something in the line, and I don't know if you're telling me this, or if you're just joking around, but you go, man, my wife gonna kill me on this line. <laughs> well, we, well, yeah, I gotta, I gotta hear that again. <laughs> hey, we promise that now, so, it's, uh, so you're, you're good. Very up there. I, I put it even. It's in my top five because I got to put Gangstar albums in there. The Moment of Truth is a heavy album. Even Daily Operation because Daily Operation was the first album I did here. You know, thanks to Showbiz having me come here to just lay scratches for a Lord Finesse remix, which is how I ended up coming here. You know, and staying here. So, uh, but in top five, you know, and you got to put Jay with the Damage of Sunrise in the East. That's a really good album. Um, so, but Prime is. Is a very, very well produced, well orchestrated, well versed. It's, it's an ill album. It's, 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 it's like what I, it, I like to, I always say I like to make things that I would buy. 
and I would be anticipating to buy this album. And I don't even listen to my own stuff. Yeah, and I'm happy about it. I can't wait until everybody gets all of it. As a veteran artist, um, what I see in, in, in the new guys like Abso, Mac Miller, and what they bring to Prime is uh, I see a lot of myself in these guys. Um, I see that they're cut from that cloth, you know, where they, where they, where they want to take it lyrically. You know, you can listen to them and you can tell that it's, it's just not A, B, C, D. It's kind of like, let me, let me see how far I can. You got to think when you listen to them. You know, and um, to get them over a preem beat, you know, it kind of it kind of puts to me that wh where where they go with the flow. You know, they make they made a lot of improvements from how things used to be in the '90s. It's kind of like I like to compare it to like basketball players. You know, like the first time you seen a crossover. Well, who was it? Probably Tim Hardaway, maybe. And by the time it manifested itself to Allen yeah, Iverson, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was <clears throat> it was a crossover but it had a new flair to it. You know, the transition from Michael Jordan to Kobe Bryant, you've seen new things there. It's a derivative of that style, but you've seen new things there. So to put these guys over a premiere beat, um, it's almost like killing two birds with one stone because you got this up-to-date current way of being a wordsmith, but you're putting it over the sound bed, the exact same sound bed that put us in the mind frames of when we first were introduced to the golden era and a lot of these guys rap like they're from that generation you know what i mean they act they rap like they're not from this era like they don't really they don't really fit in they stand out because they're so much more lyrically superior to a lot of these new guys that are out who don't you know a lot of them aren't aren't developed in that way because they didn't get they didn't get the same variety to draw from that we did, you know? So it's kind of like our jobs now as veterans to give the listener, the younger listener, more of a variety, you know, so they could shape a ill style and somehow change the landscape of hip hop one day. Well, I think the, um, myself, Joel and Joe come into getting to a place all at the same time where we felt like sobriety was a thing. I, it, it really was sheer coincidence in my book. There wasn't anything that transpired um, within our group uh, that, that was a, a pressure for me that made me, that prompted my decision. My, my decision to get sober and Joel's decision to get sober is like <laughs> too tough. I got sober because I got a problem. I had to stop drinking or else I was gonna die. Like there was no other way around it. Joel just decided to chill out and started liking the way that sobriety felt. So he figured he'd keep it going. Joel is not an alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? I'm an alcoholic, so it's almost like this. You can't even compare the two. Like, so that, that was sheer coincidence. And, and Joey does have issues, and I don't really like speaking on other people's issues. You know, I think that that's something that he can document very accurately and very vividly and I wouldn't want to do him any kind of injustice because sobriety is a very important thing to me you know so um, it wasn't anything that happened in Slaughterhouse that prompted my decision if anything it it, um, it was a very loose it's a it, it is a very loose environment you know we have so much fun you kind of you kind of show up to the party you show up to that job because you know each group that I'm in is like a different job that I go to you know, it's like real estate and hip hop, like that I own a piece of each of each store or whatever you want to call it, boutique or factory or whatever you want to call it. You know, Prem is about business and Marshall was certainly about business. You know what I mean? So I show up to that job. Shit, that, that's a party. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, look at the name. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you want to if you want to get if you want to get fucked up and just have fun, go to the slaughterhouse party because that's that's where you know, so it's definitely, um, there was a whole, a whole long line of bad decision making and uh, things happening that, that prompted, that prompted my decision uh, to get sober. And um, the fact that Joel decided to, and Joe made his decision, you know, I, that was just kind of a coincidence. I've been an athlete all my life, all my life. So anytime you ever seen me fat, it's just because I was living my life like a junkie. 
I'm, I'm just a fat junkie <laughs> eater. You know, love, 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 love junk food, love desserts. You know, but I've always been into sports and athletics, and I've always been active. You know, like I play baseball, play football. I suck at basketball, but love the game. You know, love watching it, and uh, you know, have a new ACL thanks to a bad shot that came down wrong. So, you know, no, the, the, I made the shot. And the, you know, so the layup went in, but came down wrong. I said, no more basketball career for me. But you know, just just active in just sports and all that stuff. Where I come from, I'm from a sports town, I've always been into it. And and, I, and I'm an agile big guy. You know, what I'm saying always have been. You know, like there's times of joking around with my boys, and they're like, damn, I actually can move, and it's. That's just from me always hanging out and being, being athletic, you know, in some type of capacity, just carrying the belly with me, you know. I just started back uh, a week ago because now my manager and I said, <clears throat> let's challenge each other and see who gets in shape first. And he's sending me pictures showing him with the dumbbells, and I'm not sure sending anything. I'm like, right, you keep on sending your pictures. <laughs> I'm going to transform it. And, and because of that, for one, he hasn't done it worked out in years and years. I'm, he's, 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 a, he's the Jewish Kino. <laughs> and I, I have in, in all different capacities, so I already know what to do. So I've been really focusing more on, uh, yeah, eat a burger the other day, and, you know, not, not today. And I'll check myself because I really want to challenge him since he's sending all these pictures. To, and, and I don't, and I do not like to lose. You know, I'm very competitive in musically and everything. So I'm like, all right, instead of him sending, so he's sending the pictures, I'm not. But I gotta go extra hard and I up my cardio. So this is my first week of doing it and I've missed two days because we've been doing a lot of press and I'm still just like, man, I gotta stay on top of those two days I missed. So now it's really on my conscience to do it because, you know, most times in the winter, everybody puts on weight because it's winter time, you bundle up, you got the hoodies and the thick coats so you can hide it and bug out. Everybody <laughs> waits around February and goes, I'm gonna be ready for the summer. I'm starting now so that I can get this first big chunk off so by the time New Year's hits and, and all that, I'll already be at least on a good two month Run. And honestly, the fact that we're going to start touring in around February, I really want to look good for the road because you, that's a physical thing that a lot of people don't understand if you're not in the music business and, and not if you don't tour. They've toured a lot. I, I, when they did the Slaughterhouse tour, and I, I'm watching all the y'all documenting everything and putting it up every day, they'd have a new you know piece of them being on stage and just running around. And it's grueling. It's fun too. But it's a beat down and you'll get very sick. And I warn people that always go on the road with me or even if they're about to go on the road and never had the experience, I told Joey Badass and them, I'm like, yo, dude, it's gonna be fun, but you have to get your rest and you have to eat right because you're gonna end up getting sick. One day his daddy called me and he's like, oh, everybody's sick on the tour but me. And and and, uh, and he's putting me on to say what's up to everybody. And everybody's like, yo, I've been sick for the last few days. I said, I told you. I said, y'all been hanging out, drinking, partying, and they said, yeah, but it's it's a thing that you have to kind of pro. It's it's like preparing for like like a, a fight or whatever when you go on the road. So I'm I'm already knowing February is around the corner, and by the time we, we do go out, I want to be I know how to make my energy really really pull and and not get sick not even one day. Even if I'm out for a month, I won't get sick one day. Even with the weather changes and all that, I'm good at it. So I'm preparing now because I'm older. And, and, and now I, the fatherhood part kicked in, which I didn't have to worry about prior to on my own when I was doing extensive tours. So all of that's stirring in my head now where I'm like, okay, the challenge that you're gonna do to, to, beat, to beat your manager, the challenge to be ready for, for a tour, the challenge to just get your, yourself in order because you're, you know, at your age and in hip hop, we die early. I and mean, not just from violence and getting shot, just from my health not being there. Right now, there's a lot of days being kicked around, but I expect that anyway because who wouldn't want to see it? And then on top of that, um, I was I was telling Royce, you know, Jay Z, the I still will go out and just do turntable sets, but then he'll still do the big band, giant stage set. I like how he does both. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't think we're gonna be doing arenas, but we we could definitely be doing some festivals, and then that that's definitely gonna happen. And, it's just different depending on you know, and then and then we have Adrian who we want to do we want to do stuff with his band to do that that version so that when we have sets where we have to go that route, we're already dope on that in that capacity with his band. 
and I'll, I'll just be a, a person that, that's playing instruments, or maybe even in a certain part of the show, we he, they take a break and we do it, just a turntable set, me and him rocking some of our classics, and then the band comes back on and we do more of the prime stuff. You know, that, even that'll be cool. So, but we will definitely do just turntable gig where we just go out and just me and him and you know in some type of way. But we we, we are definitely gonna do an Adrian the Young version with the band. The prom album stopped at nine tracks because it was actually supposed to be five tracks, and that was it. Um, after we did the five, which really was four because You Lose is considered an interlude because it's so short, you know. But it's yeah, it's a song now. But it, but it's just that show. We were like, oh, it's a ni nice interlude to to get the next song ready. And so uh, Royce felt like it needed more to really make it a full project. So that one turned it. To, to two more, two turned to three more, and three turned to four more. And so we knew we had nine, and then he said, and now we're complete. And we started to, you know, set it up and, you know, serve it as a nice dish that you definitely don't want to pass up. We wanted to keep it short as well. We wanted to make it, one of our goals is to kind of help to reprogram the way that people <clears throat> listen to music, the way that people digest music. So um, we're noticing now that a lot of people they pick a song or two or even three, you know, they'll, they'll tweet that, that the album is a classic and then they'll skim through it. They'll skim through it and they'll pick three songs to listen to. Or they'll gravitate toward a radio record or a club record or a single or whatever. Um, our generation, we listen to albums from front to back, you know, and artists strive. One of the things as a creative person is an artist, an artist would strive to go in and make a complete body of work that people could listen to from front mm -hmm. to back. Yeah. You know, they didn't build albums around singles or build albums around certain kinds of songs. You know, they went in there and, 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 and drew out the complete picture. You know, artists were like screenwriters. So, um, you know, we, we do realize the attention span of the average human is, <laughs> is a lot shorter now. So we made it, we made it, we weren't really thinking numbers of tracks. We were thinking more so uh, minutes of music. It's 35 minutes, which is, you know, like, a, that's like the length of your standard um, a episode of whatever your favorite TV show is. You know, something that, you know, anybody can pretty much sit through, even in today's time. So. That shows that right now that I love that I just need to catch up on on my DVR and I'm like, damn, that's an hour. <laughs> I, gotta yeah, go. I got shit. I got this yeah, to do. I got, know, yeah. But the half hour ones, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna catch this because I, I gotta get caught up. And there's other people that watch it and we're like, yo, did you see that episode? So it, I mean, that's a good it's, analogy. It's like Boardwalk Empire. It's like shit. That's an hour long. So it's like, and I'm a binge watcher. I'm a binge watcher because I have a short attention span because of Twitter. Twitter fucked my attention span up. <laughs> So, so now it's like I got to clear out a whole day just to get caught up on Boardwalk. And I got to take the fact that it's an hour into consideration. Yeah, and I was like, that was true blood. And I was like, damn, man, I want to see the last three. And, and like you said, I, I like to go and just keep on going. Because mm -hmm. now you're like, oh, man, shit, you know what? I got a little time. And then before you know it, it's like, damn, I got to go. <laughs> and then when I get, damn, I got to go means I got to go. Mm -hmm. Now you <laughs> resume play will come, come later. As far as courtesy, as far as the sound of it, and and the the way we we put that one together, honestly, yeah, I just wanted to keep staying as fresh and original with the approach to Adrian's catalog, without any of them sounding near each other, e even though sonically they are they're similar because it's, it's his instrumentation, but the approach, rhythm-wise, and I'm really picky about the drums. Like I really went deep on drum sounds that I haven't used. I, and, you know, like there's certain records, like that sounds like, like I, when I did Nas, like that snare is on, is on like five other records and they all came out at the same time, even though the sample may make the kick and the snare sound different, but they were, but the records were good as they were. This album, I, every drum was completely brand new that I've never used. And that's even different because I was like, you know, let me, let me go a different way with this. So courtesy, when I heard the sample, I just like when I found the snare and just had that quah, quah, it's, it just went. And then the, the kick, I just started just testing it out. And you know, the kick is all, I'm really more into the snare 
because the kick you can find always one that can just if it bottoms out right and it just has a certain thump to it once you once you lay it, yeah, it, it you can it, you you can make it do what you want it to do. I'm all about the snare because as soon as it goes, pow, it, no matter what, even if it's just a thud, it that's what makes me put the music to it based on the, the that little thud that I get. So with that snare, it just it just sounded right. And it's even kind of clashing a little bit, which I'm usually don't don't let happen because I don't want people going, damn, he didn't loop it tight. But the clash just works. And I was like, yo, it's loose. And I didn't program it on, on quantize in 116. I did it just by hand, freely. That's why it's a little clashy, but it just happened to work. And I told I told Royce it's a little clashy, but I could tighten it up. But once he laid the, the verses to it, I was like, you know, it's not that bad. So I left it loose. And I usually don't do it that way. Well, that's definitely a rumor. That's definitely a rumor. I think it's because of the support that they see from Paul and Marshall. But that's that's anything I do. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's uh, I don't know like what else I could do with those guys or vice versa that can show that we're family. Like we support each other. Like no matter what I do, they're gonna support it. Like they are involved in it. You know, and essentially, I mean, anything that I do, man, like, they're involved in it, you know, like, just like my wife is. You know what I mean? Like, you'll probably see her tweeting around the clock about anything I do, whether she likes it or not. That's that's just what family does. But, you know, in terms of um, Shady having some type of, like, ownership or some type of behind-the-scenes string pull, no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's not nothing like that. I, I bounce ideas off of Paul as much as I can. Just to um, just to surround myself with a great mind, and um, being around somebody that you can learn from, somebody who's smarter than you, who you can learn from. You never want to be the smartest person in the crew, you know. So, um, and that's me and Paul's relationship. I hit him all day, like, "Yo, what do you think about this? What do you think about the first edit to this video? What do you think about the?" And I bounce ideas off of him as if it's his project, and he'll give me advice as if it's his project, but. It's still our project. We just got 100% support from family. It was something that I've always visualized. Um, Common was one of the, I, he was one of the first artists. Soul by the Pound was um, the soundtrack to my life at one point. And I've always, uh, Common's always been, he's been on my bucket list for a long time. The last in-depth conversation that I had with him was actually at Dilla's house. It was at Dilla's house and I was working with Dilla at the crib and Common just happened to be there and we sat and kicked it for a long time just about working and he gave me a lot of advice and shit like that. And um, I've always said whenever I got the opportunity to work with him that I would. And it was just like this particular joint I thought he would sound ill on. So I just figured I'd give it a shot and just reach out and see is he busy, what he has going on, like sky's the limit, he could be shooting a movie in Africa or something, you never know what time, you know what I mean? So when I reached out to him, it just so happened he had time to do it. It was right after he rolled out his project, he was already in I Wanna Rap mode and tear some shit up, and we just caught him at the right time and it happened. In regards to Detroit hip hop period, they have a lot of lyricists. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lyrical city. You know, Guilty Simpson, you know, Elza, Royce, him, uh, you know, you know, uh, he, he, even Big Sean's got lyrics. Like, the, the kid can rhyme, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it, it's a lyrical town, you know, and it always has been. You know, shout out to Trick Trick, too. I mean, I was just talking about Trick Trick. I was like, yo, some of the stuff he does that might be club oriented or, 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 or on some gangster shit, the style of beats I do, he'll kill it just with, with, with being himself and, and, and not just come with some just, just you know, all right, lyrics. They're going to be put down properly where it's like, damn, all right, you said some shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it, it, it's a, it really is a, a, a lyric city and, and it's, it's ill because. Motown, you know, the label and all the whole Barry Gordy thing, in a weird way, it's almost like you should be as good as what Motown did for your city to make, make it, you know, all eyes turn to where y'all come from because a, 
a lot of heart and soul of, of the music that, that that we grew up on from, from Stevie Wonder to you know even Aretha Franklin you know not being on she's on Atlantic but she's she's from Detroit you know what I'm saying so just people like that that come from there you know Martha Reeves and just all that stuff what validates a project to me is <clears throat> the focus it, it, it just just an entire focus on it's it, on shaping an album um, you know, some people put that much pride into shaping their albums. I mean, obviously we both do. Um, Eminem definitely does it. I mean, he, he's over meticulous, and you know, if that makes sense, Dr. Dre is over meticulous about making sure it's not ready to. We know for a fact it's ready. You know, people get upset like, ah, you're taking forever. You're taking forever. They really don't understand that that's how much you care about what you serve. You know, like. It's like selling dope, you know, you can have some weak shit where you know, like, man, this shit's weak, and then you can get me high. And then you can serve that shit where it's like, yo, man, I need another blast of that. Mm -hmm. We serve that kind of dope, man. And, that, and that's the type of customers you want, you know what I'm saying? I, I want real customers. I don't want no half-ass customers because real customers will come back even on a bad day because they know quality-wise you're going you're gonna to deliver. And you want that reputation for knowing uh, that anytime we drop something, you know, like anytime a Eric B and Rock him album was coming, I was gonna buy it even if I haven't heard it because I knew Peyton Full was good, Follow the Leader was good, same thing with Run DMC, same thing with LL. You know, it's it's the same expectations. Public Enemy, you know, you the Kane, those are expectations that we, you know, we anticipate because we know that they always have great bodies of work. So if we're gonna now put out our own. It has to be on that same level where we give a fuck about it. Yeah, and plus when you asked that question, you said that we have plenty of plaques. And that's a good point because you get a certain validation off of the, pro the product being a good product and being critically acclaimed. And then you get a different kind of validation off of seeing the rewards from it, which is like being able to hang up a plaque that kind of signifies it. But for some reason, people forget about the plaques. Not us. But the people do. But when it's really, really good music, they don't forget about that. That doesn't go away. You know what I mean? Like, or people would be like, yo, you dress really nice. I wonder what you're making your money from. I haven't heard nothing from you in two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, yo, what the fuck? I just sold three million records. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's just like people forget about stats. But when the music is really, really good, that's where the real validation comes in at.